Hello everyone. Today I will be speaking to you guys about um, the challenges that our industry need to face uh, for moving from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. And I think uh, the presentation right before was excellent. So we're going to follow on these lines. So I'm, I'm going to be a bit uh, looking at uh, the disruption between our markets. Another word for this speech is the clash of the titans. So the GAFA is Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple. And I just name, came up with the name Biba. It wasn't great, though. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, and Cardano. Still top five these days. Um, so yeah, there is definitely a clash between those industries. And uh, I see two groups working against each other. And I just think it's wrong. So um, here is what I would like to focus on today. Uh, so a few words about myself. I'm the CEO of uh, Yellow. I just watched uh, an episode of The Office last night, so I figure I, I'm also the world greatest boss. Uh, French-American, live and love Ukraine, uh, Web 1.0 entrepreneur, cloud DevOps architect for European banks, and passionate about peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, so Yellow is a blockchain accelerator. It's all over the world. It's about 100 plus employees. Um, we have a network of brokers. We are a market maker. And this is a Web 3.0 company. OK, so this is a small illustration of crossing the chasm. And um, I would like to take all of your attention onto this problem and uh, suggesting a way forward. So. We've all been through there, the Web 1.0, the Web 2.0, and here I'm drawing the chasm, and this is where we are right now. We are the little gopher trying to figure out how we're going to go from this point to the Web 3.0. So the Web 3.0, I'm definitely referring to Ethereum smart contract, but these are practically unusable for mainstream industry, and they are not reality yet. So. Let's go a bit through the history of internet. So the internet started through ISP connecting us together. Um, this is my first modem, almost. Over there on the picture, you're going to see what the servers we were running and visiting websites were running on. So that's our cloud infrastructure. ICQ, Netscape, great projects, great companies. We love them. So we had the, the, the bubble of the dot-com and then the crash of the dot-com. But this period is about reaching people, users, and bring them online. And that was the first era of internet. And uh, this is still today our foundation. Like We are using pretty much the same network, the same IP system, and we are building upon this. So came Web 2.0. So this is the web we live in, and I would say one of the significant um, events was the broadband internet. Of course, the apparition of the GAFA, so mainly Facebook, really changed everything out there, and YouTube, I should say. Um, we moved from these uh, um, servers into professional data centers, and um, elastic cloud computing. I can really tell that it was a challenge for the industry to explain people that cloud infrastructure was going to be the future of internet. And now this cloud infrastructure did scale the internet to billions of users, and we have billions of websites, let's say millions. So when Google acquired YouTube, he said this is the next, next step in the evolution of the internet. And I think this is where we are. We are, again, at the next step of the evolution of the internet. We're getting closer to this event. Uh, the Web 3.0 is right at the doorstep. So what did the Web 2.0 achieve? It did achieve web scaling. We, we came from a little community of internet users to a, a mass market. So, NASDAQ top 100 companies, being a total of $15 trillion, is definitely a good uh, representation of this mass market. This is a giant economy and lots of consumers using it. So 
here we are. So crypto has done some achievement. Bitcoin is not really a new technology anymore. Um, we've done 10,000 other cryptocurrencies. Maybe this is an achievement. I think having Coinbase being a $80 billion NASDAQ listed company is also an achievement. And we see 2.5 trillion on the coin market cap. So this is the beginning of something. We can definitely notice it. Though we're facing major cross chain issue. Plenty of, of us are working on these issues. Um, it feels when you use the blockchain every day that this is a pain point of our infrastructure. So the, the infrastructure is chaotic at this stage. Um, you're going to be on Polymatic, you're going to be on side chains, Binance chains, whatever. So there is no major mass adoption um, and there is no global consensus of how we're going to use crypto or blockchain for the mass market. So we're not there yet. We're not there yet on the web 3.0, but don't we wish all to be, don't we wish all to have this mass market adoption? You know, this is why we are doing those conferences. So I've been giving a lot of thoughts. I've been working on um, some research uh, these days. And so here uh, I'm suggesting a way forward. So the way I see it is that first, we need to keep going, building the infrastructure. These things have been started. There is multiple networks and layers of architecture uh, in place. But uh, this is still ongoing. We see the progress of Solana and all of these upcoming improvement to the network. So we are building the infrastructure still today. When that is done, we have to integrate with the existing layers. So this infrastructure needs to merge with the existing infrastructure of, of internet. And it's not going to be another internet. So that's really the point here. Um, and finally, we need to grow hundreds, thousands of companies helping legacy applications to move to Web 3.0. So we need to define and help making the migration path from 2 to version 3. So this would get a bit more technical, but some of you might have heard state channels. Um, this is the core of the research that I've been doing, and uh, I do think they are truly remarkable, and they are underrated today. So people don't really use them, and um, this is mostly something we do with uh, a bunch of researchers from consensus, um, but there haven't been any significant spotlight on this, and this is what I would like to do today is uh, show you what uh, state channels are capable of. So state channel, more simple, is, um, is a cryptographic system for running transaction on top of the blockchain uh, without having to pay for the cost or without having the downside of the blockchain. So it's, a, it's a yet another layer on top of the blockchain. Um, and this truly horizontally scales. So horizontally scales means you're adding more servers, it's going to take more traffic. So this can scale to the size of the internet, to the scales of Google data centers and their large code base. I was reading recently um, about monorepo of Google. Those guys have 2 billion lines of code uh, in their repository for their 10,000 plus employees. Um, and they're not going to rewrite it in solidity. That's a sure thing. This is crypto as well. So this is mainly using RSA or ECDCA signatures. Uh, works great with cold storage as well. Um, this is blockchain agnostic, and this is multi-chain capable. Because this sits on top of multiple blockchains, um, it does not have an opinion, and it's just a protocol. And as long as you respect the same protocol, you can pretty much initialize a channel from any blockchain. So I think the property of being blockchain agnostic and multi-chain capable is a great buffer um, to delimita delimitate the layer for the next application. So I'll get there on the next point. So I believe state channel is a great way to connect the internet of value to the current internet. And uh, 
I would say the current value of the internet is based on the amount of traffic. We are the value, the user, the amount of people online. Um, they, there's going to be a, a growth in the web 3.0 and this growth is not necessarily going to be amount of connected users online, uh, but it's going to be more value online and that's going to be very significant. So value is going to move from real world to this virtual world. Um, so I like to use the word internet of value or internet of finance. The state channel, um, exactly like the GAFA, so all of these websites, um, you trusting YouTube and Google for, for filtering the content for your children. So you can think that Facebook and YouTube is a safe place. Uh, I think they're doing an okay job here. And on top of this, we have this little infrastructure that we use every day that is called SSL and domain names. So brands are very useful for making internet a safe place. And I don't think we should go against that. And I think today DeFi is a bit of going the other way. And, and I think we need to reconnect here. So state channel does require a level of trust and that is very important. And I do not think it's a problem. Many of you have heard the blockchain layer ones, which would be Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, Binance Smart Chain, Cardano, and we often call them layer one. But that would be the case if we are actually rebuilding another internet on the side on top of this layer one. And so I think we should stop using this term and I think we should forget about saying this is layer one. Because now we need to think of this layer within the internet layers. So on the left side, I made you a simplified representation of the ISO network layers. Physical layers, network layers, these are the data centers, the cable, the internet provider, every one of you are using. Um, transport layers, protocol layers, um, pretty much HTTP bringing you to Amazon.com. And finally, the application. Well, the application is uh, uh, TikTok, Amazon.com, Facebook, the place you trust, the place you're consuming online. Those applications are not going anywhere because they are billion dollar businesses. Uh, so we have to deal with them. And I, I do not really think that blockchain is going to come up with an alternative to Airbnb that's going to take over Airbnb and changes everything. I think Airbnb is a service company and they're doing a good job. So they have to move to, toward the blockchain. So then we have this less clear layers for the, for the blockchain. Um, having the layer, the blockchain layer, the sidechain layer because of these scaling issues, smart contract layer, nicest one, the web 3.0. And here I'm adding the state channel. Um, I don't think anybody is layering the state channel on top of this, but I think this is where it should be because these state channel are protocol layer and they stand right before the application. So to give you an example, if you want to be doing uh, an online casino, this is where you should connect. Your triple eight.com is going to be the application um, and the state channel is going to have a poker protocol that makes the rules of the game between the poker player. And this is scalable and extremely cheap to maintain on the blockchain. You don't need a transaction for every turn of the game. Here is the answer. I think there is an industry problem. There is the chasm between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. Bitcoin has been around for more than 10 years. And well, I'm getting impatient and eager to be on the next stage, this Web 3.0. But things are not moving really fast here. Um, and I do believe that state channel is a solution to bridge us toward the web 3.0. I don't think I'm alone. I'm working with consensus and have been purchasing a lot of companies doing research and development on state channel. Those things are a bit difficult to comprehend and understand because it's not only about micropayment. These are protocols. Um, and so, yeah, I gave you some key takeaways. 
Stage Channel is actually a very easy way to move web application to the blockchain without necessarily rewriting your web application into a distributed application. You don't need to understand Solidity or all of these things. You keep your protocol and, and you're fine. So we can move billions of dollars of legacy assets to the blockchain and get the benefit of micropayment and this trusted environment. Um, the Internet of Trust. Well, I don't think we should oppose the, the Web 2.0 trust with the trustless environment that is blockchain. I don't think it's incompatible. And I do think that if you want to bring Google or Amazon on the blockchain, it's not about accepting Bitcoin. It's about giving them a business model on this new web. And I think State Channel is, requires trust, and so they value their brands, and they have a reason to be there. And so, last point is that you get all of the benefit of the blockchain without the downsize. And um, today, scaling the blockchain is going to take a very long time, and I think we should get started with migrating the web to Web 3.0, uh, and, and there is an interesting solution here. And